Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday, the 6th of January 2022. Today in Mill News, a little bit more about the stories that are already ongoing and currently developing. And a look ahead to the big game of the weekend. So we've got this now. Apparently, I don't know where this has come from, uh, Leeds United and Watford are interested in Jed Wallace now. But there's no um, half decent source for that. So this is from HITC.com. Uh, Leeds show interest in signing 27 year old star after two failed Nottingham Forest bids. Leeds United are interested in signing Jed Wallace this month as Nottingham Forest attempt to sign the Millwall winger. London News Online claim that Forrester made two bids to sign Wallace, but Millwall have rejected both offers. The Sun claim that Millwall are not willing to sell Wallace during the month's transfer window. That's despite the fact that Wallace is out of contract at the end of the season and could simply leave Millwall for nothing. Millwall face mounting interest in, um, in Wallace, though, with Leeds United and Watford are understood to be keen. The news claim that Leeds and Watford are monitoring the situation surrounding Wallace and a potential January exit. Uh, Wallace 27 has now racked up almost 250 appearances for Millwall and has 5 goals and 6 assists in just 21 league outings this season. Capable of playing out wide or behind the striker, Wallace is a creative force, something Leeds have lacked since Pablo Hernandez's exit. Leeds will now be waiting to pounce if Millwall show any indication that they will sell Wallace, no doubt hoping for a bargain. <clears throat> um, so there you go. So apparently Leeds and Watford. Now, that's Premier League clubs. That's what Jed Wallace is probably hoping for. Uh, he's been linked in the past to, to Burnley and Aston Villa. But um, Aston Villa was under Dean Smith. Uh, now they've got Gerard there. I don't think, I think that's faded away. Um, but probably Leeds and Watford... Um, that's probably more, more what he's interested in getting into the Premier League because Premier League is everything. It's 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 the biggest show in town, and you want to be in it. And if you're not in it, you're out of it. Um, but going to Leeds United, um, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I think we saw with Steve Morrison when he went there. Uh, I don't now looking from the outside in, it seemed. I don't know because I don't follow Leeds, but I'm a Mill fan. It seemed that the um, Steve Morrison didn't really get a, a decent shake of it at, at Leeds, partly because the Mill Mill stink was on him, the Mill brand was on him, and you've got to say that's something similar to Jed Wallace. It's not as if he's been here one season and then we're selling him on or he's leaving on straight away. He's been Mr. Mill Wall for quite some time. He's been our best player by far. For quite some time, um, so he is uh, very highly linked with Millwall, and I don't think that's going to go down with Le with Leeds United fans, and he probably might struggle up there with them on his back. So probably Watford would make more sense as well, especially if he wants to. Go I don't know where he's living now. Does he still live out in the Portsmouth way? If he still lives out that way now, that's probably closer to him to get into Watford from Portsmouth area. So maybe that's that will be a more up his street, to, as you would say, to, to go to Watford. Um, someone online did say QPR. Now QPR are in the playoffs, they're in a very good season now. If you think they've got a very real chance of getting in the Premier League, for them to spend what one and a half million on Jed Wallace, just to give them. The little boost to get up into that Premier League. That would they would be paid back tenfold if for one and a half million. I mean, that that would be that would be literally worth it. But there's no guarantees in football, so they can end up spending that money and still be in a championship next season. Um, but we don't know, so it goes on. But one one thing we're not hearing is Millwall thinking of putting in a better contract offer. We're not hearing that, are we? So it's almost certain that Jed Wallace is going to leave. 
and just happens we're just waiting to see now if it's before February the 1st or if, if it's in the summer but it almost seems certain that he will be leaving and who knows where will it be Turkey will it be Yorkshire will it be wherever Watford is Herefordshire I don't know uh, but we will see. We will see. Or will it be Nottinghamshire for Nottingham Forest? That uh, we, yeah. What can we do? What can we do? We just have to wait and see. So we've got Gar Gary Rowett doing his pre-match conference for the big game on Saturday, the FA Cup game, and he's been asked questions because that's what happens at a press conference. You get asked questions and. So let's see what he said. Samuel Boss responds to a question about Nottingham Forest and Besiktas link to Jed Wallace. This is from the news at den.co.uk. Gary Rowett refused to comment on speculation around Jed Wallace, but hinted if a suitable bid came in the window, the club would have to consider it. Rowett reiterated he wants to keep Wallace, who has a contract offer from the club, but is in the last six months of his deal. Nottingham Forest wants to sign Wallace 27 this month, while a report this week claimed Turkish top flight side, the Siktas are aiming to secure the attacker on a pre-contract agreement ahead of next summer. That latter scenario would mean the Lions receiving no transfer fee for the best player over the last two seasons. Wallace has scored 10 goals in each of the last two campaigns and has 5 goals and 6 assists in 21-22 so far. Rowett was asked in his pre-match press conference before the third round of the FA Cup against Crystal Palace on Saturday about the reported interest from Forrest and Besiktas and whether he expects Wallace to still be at the club after the end of January's transfer window. I don't want to necessarily get involved in who's done what and where we are and whether stories are true or not, he said. I think the key really is it's quite simple. Jed has been one of our best players in terms of that forward line, certainly over the period that I've been here. He's been in double figures every season. He's performed fabulously well. We've made it quite clear early on we wanted to try and extend his contract and try to come to some sort of agreement. But any player has the opportunity, if they're out of contract at the end of the season, they have an option to let that roll and see what happens. I think that's really where we're at. He's an ambitious player. Having sat down and had a conversation with him, he wants to play in the Premier League. He wants to play at a top level the best level that he can and in some ways you don't want to stop a player from being ambitious but I'm sure there's going to be lots of different speculation as a club obviously if we felt we were going to lose someone for nothing at the end of the season and we did have an offer we felt was good business and of course we'd have to think about that that's out of my remit but the club I'm sure would have to take that into consideration but that's not really our intention that's not really how we set out we want Jed to stay and we'll see what happens we want to strengthen anyway, regardless, we want to try to be ambitious this window and see if we can bring one or two players in, maybe two or three players in. We've probably got four or five players who have expressed a desire to play more regularly. There will be an opportunity for them to move on and play football. If that happens, we'll try to do a little bit more business than we normally would. It's a good time just to freshen things up a little bit. And we certainly want to try and see if we can push a little bit harder for our ultimate ambition, which is to get into the top six. So regarding Jed Wallace, he's basically saying he's he's saying they want to keep him. They've made an offer to him, but that if some crazy offer comes in, they might have to take it. But he's just speculating on that. I, I don't think anyone's actually said to him. But so, but the Nottingham Forest bid was rumored to be one point two million, and the the club said that was the risery. He's out of contract. Uh, in the summer Nottingham Forest could literally say to him uh, if you join us in the summer we'll give you a massive bonus and instead of Millwall getting that 1.2 million they're basically giving most, most of it to Jed Wallace and they still save their money they improve their team next season so you know Teams can just wait it out. They don't have to pay anything for him now. And even here's the thing: even if we did accept a Nottingham Forest bid, so we we accept a bid from Nottingham Forest, we let them start talking to Jed Wallace, and Jed Wallace says, "I'm not signing for you. I'm letting my contract run out in the summer." You can just say that. 
And the club, what, what, what can we all, you can, we all can't force him to join Nottingham Forest. They can only accept the, um, accept the, the uh, offer and then allow Nottingham Forest to speak to him. And he can just say, yeah, I'm, I'm not going Forest, bye. Thanks, thanks for the offer, but uh, no, no thank you. Cheerio, bye bye. The club can't dictate where he's going. Now they can lean on him and say, "Oh, oh, we 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 don't have two pennies to rub together. We really need this money." But at the end of the day, like you're gonna move your whole life to to a place you don't want to go to because you get kind of emotionally blackmailed into it. No, I don't think that's gonna happen. So we'll see what happens. Or what could happen is. They base Mill will basically say, wait until the best offer comes in the end end of the transfer window. See what that is and say, okay, we've had this offer for him. Any other clubs want to match that? You can go. And then you get four or five clubs come in. Like we've seen with Leeds, Watford, whatever, and then they all get permission to speak to Jed Wallace, and Jed Wallace can say, Okay, well, I'm not going there, I'm not going there, I'll speak to you two. And then whichever one impresses me in terms of in it's kind of reverse interview, job interview, I'll go to whichever one I, I fancy. So that might be a situation that could happen. But uh, this other thing here at the bottom. So we've probably got four or five players who've expressed their desire to play more regularly, and he's going to try and move them on. So he's going. So we're already down to the bare bones. Because of COVID and injuries and what we've got, what we've got, we, we've got Leonard and Ballard out long-term injuries. So, but now he's saying we're gonna, they're gonna let four or five more players leave. Even though we're already down to the bare bones, the under all all the better players in the under twenty threes are loaned out, and I'll get to that later. There's a story about that. He's gonna let even more players go. That seems very, um, what's the word, fucking stupid. I mean, COVID's still, I mean, it's subsiding partly now, I think, especially with these guys have already gotten it, most of the teams. So you'd think they're going to be stronger now. Um, we're going to have, in terms of January, we've only got uh, games on Saturdays, but February and March, we've got was it three is it two or three games to make? we've got two games to make up yeah two games to make up uh, the game against Swansea and the game against Preston North End which they're both home games but where are they going to be played in the in the calendar and how's that going to affect the squad and now you're saying you're going to let four or five players go now who's that going to be maybe maybe he's talking about under 23s I don't know He's going to loan more under 23s out because the under 23s are on a winter break now. I suppose this, there's a game next Monday, but we'll see. So, seems a bit stupid to let more players leave than we're going to have coming in. Now, he's going to try and sign. He says he wants to sign two. Uh, who are they going to be? Is it, is it going to be Ikpizu? Is it going to be the Sengalese ad? And talking of the Sen 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 Senegalese lad, he also gave a comment on that in the press conference. So this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Uh, Mill boss responds to claims of 1.5 million bid for Senegalese striker Pape Abib Gay. Gary has confirmed an interest in KV Cortrix, Pape Abib Gay, but says reports Mill will bid 1.5 million for the Senegalese striker are incorrect. The 22-year-old plays in Belgium's Dupla Pro League and has scored six goals in 18 appearances this season. It had been claimed that Mill's approach for Gay had been rejected. I am respectful, he is at another club, said Rowett. Some of the links you see are a little bit tenuous. He is a player we've had interest in, but I think he is injured at the moment. We certainly haven't put any offers in for that player or any other player at this moment in time. There is a little something in that, but it's not a huge deal at the moment. So they haven't put a bid in, but he is an interest player they're interested in. So there you go. There you go. Now that's kind of 
alerted all the other clubs uh, about him. I think he's definitely wants to come to London. I told you in yesterday's video, um, he signed up with Cherno Samba's agency, and he's been linked with Watford and Neil Wall. So he's seems he's trying to get moved to England, South East England, London area. So maybe Charlton. Um, do they have enough money? I don't know. Uh, he'd probably want to be in the top two leagues. He's playing in the top league in Belgium. Now, I know it's only Belgium, but it's still the top league in Belgium. So you would think he wants to play... You know, he could probably get in the championship team quite easily. I don't know. QPR, maybe? I don't know. Um, we'll see. I don't know. But maybe he's one of the ones coming in. So... Let's move on now to this. This is now we don't know who's going to be playing against Crystal Palace. We do know that George Long will be in goal because Gary Rout said that. But what about the other players? Are they coming back from injury? Are they coming back from COVID? Are they stay all right? Are they training? Will they be involved? We don't know. Gary Rout is kind of maybe doing a bit of mind games, saying there's going to, there's going to be a depleted squad. Apparently you can have up to was it, eight or nine subs in the FA Cup this season. And you can use five of them. And he did hint that he might have Zach Lovelace on the bench again and bring him on. And maybe another uh, a few more under 23s as well. So let's have a look at what is happening at the training. Because they were training at the Den this morning. So what happened? So here you go. Um, Benicophobia and Sean Hutchinson training. Benicophobia saying... After you, after you, ladies first, age before beauty. And then we've got Billy Mitchell and Mason Bennett. Nice to see Billy Mitchell wearing uh, some shorts, even though it's freezing out there. Uh, Scott Malone, Murray Wallace. Uh -huh. Gary Rowett, pointing. And who we got here? So we've got George Evans there on the left, Michael Keftenfeld. Mason Bennett, Scott Malone, Ben Thompson looking miserable. Okay. There's Gary Rowett again. Billy No Mates on the other side of the pitch. No one's near him. Uh, there you go, Matt Smith looking quite trim. Okay. And Billy Mitchell again. There's Bart Piekowski. George Savile, who... Um, congratulations to George Savile. He's... Uh, had a baby delivered a couple of days ago i believe um so there was a worry that he might have to miss the game because he would have to be at, called up to hospital with his uh partner in labor but um uh, the birth was a, a, apparently on the fifth i believe um there's there's a photo on twitter which is uh you can see if you're interested i, I didn't think of bringing it up but yeah, so new baby girl, I believe. Hope I got that right. For George Savile and his partner there. Um, but George Savile still making it into training, so good for you. Uh, here we go. Who have we got there? So we've got Bod Varson there. So he is alive. He didn't die of COVID. Um, moving on. Who else have we got? So there's. Bennett, Keith DeBeld, Bod Varson. Ah, McNamara. So there's McNamara now. There was some talk. Gary Rout said McNamara might not be available. He's apparently he's ill. Well, he's, he looks pretty not ill to me there. Crazy enough to go up for a header with Matt Smith. Um, well, maybe he does have a fever. Maybe he's got something wrong with his head. There's Bennett Phoebe. Uh, Bukowski again. Scott Malone. George Long. It will be set to start against Crystal Palace. Um, now here's the thing. Here's an interesting thing. And I wonder if... I don't know if they're going to do it. Maybe they won't. Now the FA Cup third round uh, this year. Going straight to extra time and penalties. There will be no replay. Now if, if you were the manager. If you were Gary Rowett. And we got through the draw. Now we know Gary, loves, Gary Rowett likes a draw. If we got... Through the 90 minutes for a draw. And we got through the extra time with a draw. When you got to the penalties. Just before. Would you bring Bart on? 
would you leave Longy in goal? It's a bit of a slap to the guy that started, because you imagine that he's well, he's a goalkeeper. He knows how to save penalties. He's he's just not a dummy. He knows how to do it. But you imagine Bart's got a reputation for doing it maybe a bit better. Would you switch him out? It's a tactic used by um, some crazy managers, but it, it does seem to work. Um, it seems to be as well, like it maybe it gets in the minds of the opposition, like they, ch they changed the goalkeeper, they brought, they brought him on. He must know, he must be shit hot at saving penalties, like. Right? It's just a bit of mind games in terms of the penalty shootout. So would you do that? I probably would, to be honest, yeah. And but what do I know? Probably piss off George Long, but uh, there you go. So are we so there's Nana Burting. There's Danny McNamara. Thumbs up. Danny McNamara going at Matt Smith again. Uh, there's Zach Lovelace. So looks set to be involved. Uh, Nana Barteng, uh, Dana McNamara, ah, Tom Bradshaw, first time we've seen him. So, pretty much a lot, lot of people. Well, who didn't we see? We didn't see Jake Cooper, we didn't see Tyler Burry. Um, are they okay? Now, apparently, Jake Cooper must be because they spoke to him about this. This is from newsatden.co.uk. So what's happening? Mill defender will not hesitate to take a penalty against Crystal Palace despite Brighton miss. Jake Cooper will be one of the first players to put his hand up to take a spot kick if Mill's FA Cup third round tie against Crystal Palace goes to penalties on Saturday. Cooper missed the Lions' last penalty against Brighton in 2019 as the Premier League side went through 5-4 following a 2-2 draw. This Saturday, South London Derby must be deciding on a day after replays in the third and fourth round were scrapped to three updates for postponed League games. Cooper will step forward if Saturday's tie goes all the way. Uh, yeah, for sure, Cooper said. I was actually disappointed that day. Uh, I wasn't in the top five. I would go for the top five all time. I was in that sudden death period. My mentality when it comes to situations like that is no issue. I would put myself up there again. We haven't seen a full out at the den for a while. It must have been pre COVID times. To experience that for me again and some of the players who haven't experienced that is brilliant. We're really looking forward to that and it will be a fantastic day for the club. After the weekend, you almost want to step back into the league and turn the league form around. But it's a great game to take us away from that. A big game like Crystal Palace at home, you don't get them too often. For the fans and for the whole club, it's going to be a massive day. It's one where we're very much looking forward to. It will be nice to play against a different team from that next level above to test yourself. And again, uh, and another play we didn't see in the training photos was Jed Wallace. And we didn't see Jake Cooper, so hopefully... So he gave this interview, hopefully he's okay, I don't know, maybe he just, maybe he just missed, missed training for, for some other reason, I don't know. Hopefully he's, he's okay, um, don't know what's happening to Tyler Bury though, he wasn't involved. Um, all a bit weird, all a bit weird. Um, but again, so it's going to, it's, it could go to penalties. Like I said, who's taking penalties and who's, who's facing the penalties, would you switch... George Long for Bart Bierkowski, or would that be a massive slap in the face to George Long? Or would it be a bit of mind games for the Crystal Palace players about to take the penalties? Uh, you, you don't know, you don't know, do you? So, let's move on now to this. So this is from newsatden.co.uk. So in terms of players coming in, players going out, and players already out on loan, not coming back. So, Mill plans for Sutton United forward plus decision on attacker who could play against Palace. Mill are currently planning to leave Isaac Aloffi on loan at Sutton United for the rest of the season. Aloffi, 22, has scored 5 goals in 18 appearances in all competitions for the League 2 side this season. And Mill brought back Tyler Burry from Artlepool United this week after his initial loan deal ended on January 2. The Lions attack could see significant changes this month. Not in the forest wants to sign Jed Wallace in January while a Turkish club. The sick tests are being linked with a pre-contract offer, which would see the player move in the summer after his current term expires. We all are interested in forward Papa Habib Gaye from Belgian top flight side KV Kortrijk. Uh, the likes of Isaac, the plan is to keep him out on loan at this moment in time, line boss Gary Rout said. Tyler's come back in just to give an extra body to get through this little period of COVID. He can do himself a little bit of good by training, potentially, if he does get in some involvement in the FA Cup game. 
Uh, then the plan will be if he feels he needs more game time, ideally he goes back out to Hartlepool. But well, that's going to be down to them, down to the player. But if we send him back out on loan, that will be our first option because they've looked after him well. They know the player, he's done well there. Uh, we want him to develop either way, so it will be a decision on that in the next 10 days. Uh, meanwhile, News then understands that Mill currently intend to let defender Alex Mitchell see out the season on loan at Lee and Orient. And that's another thing, so... With all the problems we've had, the players we've got, they're not coming back from loan. The only one being Tyler Burry. Now they're keeping him for the for the minute and then they might let him go at the end of the transfer window. Now why is that? Is that Jed Wallace? If Jed Wallace stays, Tyler Burry can go out on loan. If Jed Wallace goes, Tyler Burry stays here. Is that the situation with that? I don't know. Um, and again, Alex Mitchell. Now, another player we didn't see in the, the photographs of the training at the den this morning was Alex Pierce. Um, now, Alex Pierce played very well against Coventry and then not so well against Bristol City. Um, is it too soon for Alex Mitchell? Apparently, because they're going to let him stay late in Orient. But we need Alex Mitchell and Isaac Loffey, they need to be involved next season. If they're not, then what are we doing? Um, I mean, literally, what's the point? Uh, we will see. We will see. Um, we will see. It's, you've got Isaac Lofius out at Sutton United on loan and then you've got Zach Lovelace 15 year old playing for the under 18s but he's, he's being brought on that literally makes no sense to me and you're going to have Zach Lovelace on play, apparently on the bench for the Crystal Palace game as well I said you can recall all these players bring them into Millwall play them or put them on the bench for January and then at the, win at the end of the window let them go back unless the clubs uh, throw a hissy fit and then say well no, well, no fuck that well, what are they going to do it, maybe it's because of the terms of the deal maybe they are paying their wages now I thought they couldn't really probably afford their wages to be honest with you so I don't know but maybe if they are paying the wages and then we we do that it messes up the deal and then when we say well you can have him back and then they say well yeah okay we will but we're not going to pay the same amount we paid last time so they might want to change that but I don't know what's going on but to play a 15 year old instead of Isaac Aloffy literally makes no sense to me it really doesn't but what do I know anyway that's it for today's video thank you for watching goodbye